What'd you think? Yeah. Triple eight nine five seven ninety five seventy. What'd you think? I was and again, if I use the word disgusted or embarrassed, I'm obviously doing that in a sports context. I was not physically ill. Watching that game and watching them fall behind early, I thought this can't possibly go that way. Warriors rally, they get it close at halftime. They go on a mini run to start the third quarter, and I had the same thought. Here we go. Warriors going on a run. The better team, the experienced team, Warriors are back in this thing. They're going to turn the tides, and they're going to beat Sacramento. They're not going out against Keegan and Keon, and then Keegan was unguardable, and Keon Ellis was open, and he was knocking him down, and the one that kind of drove the stake in my heart a little bit, forget De'Aaron Fox because he's mostly unguardable. That guy can get his shot in the mid-range, the midi mark. De'Aaron Fox, he can find his way from 18 to 10 feet. The dude can score. He's a good player. The one that He's hurt the most player. was a, a sequence of Sabonis. When Sabonis had a couple of... He had he won and he had some rebounds. He was good. He was good in the first half. He was he was kind of he foul was, trouble. And yeah. I was like, and he has his. Does he non- always have a black eye? Yeah, you know what? Christy asked the same question, and I I I had decided the answer must be yes. Yeah, yeah, that must be a thing. I it's th- like yeah. become almost like a birthmark or whatever. Kind of. Or, or he's so annoying that someone always punches him in the face. He's a physical player. I, I don't and- know. When he got into foul trouble, and then the Warriors made that mini run to start the third, I was excited. I was thinking, okay, here you go, Dubs. You've had Sabonis flummoxed a little bit. He's in foul trouble. Time to go on a run. And then trip after trip after trip, they couldn't stop anybody. And on the other end, it was miss, miss, miss. Score, score, score. That thing got back to 12. And I was like, this ain't good. Well, I, I think it's really, it's a day to find out what yesterday did to your brain. You know what I mean? Like, what were the, where does your brain go when you see something like that? Um, and I, I think we've all been there in life. This is not to take some sort of a shot. Like, I, I, I want this to be the first thing that we say, because it's, it, it is possible that, the era of Steph Clay and Draymond on the same team is over. It's possible. I we we don't know. But just because of that possibility, let me first say this. Thank you guys so much. For what? Holy <laughs> hell. Like, and maybe you're just all gonna be back in October. But oh my God, like please let that be the first thing that goes. Uh, that goes out today. Thank you guys so much for the most epic thing I have ever seen in my life in terms of basketball. Um, And yes, I include, I was a basketball fan in the 80s and early 90s, and yes, I watched, I didn't watch Michael Jordan as a Bulls fan, but I saw that. I, I found this to be more, maybe not like more effective in terms of basketball, I found this to be more connected more connected with its fan base. I've never seen anything like this. I've never seen anything like Steph Curry. I've never seen anything like the ball moving the way that it moves. So the number one thing that I want to say today is thank you. Thank you, Warrior Organization. Thank you, Big Three. Thank you, Steve Kerr, for what has been the most unbelievable NBA ride of our lifetimes. I grew up with Chris Cohan as the owner. Thank you so, and Joe Lacob, right. thank you so much for what has just been incredible. Yeah, I hope. Thank you. You know, it may and, or may not and, be over. And maybe it's not over. It's over in its form. It's over. It's over in its form. And that's kind of what I was saying in the crossover, because if they do bring back Clay and Steph and Draymond are still here, and I think that they are going to bring back Clay Thompson. And I agree with you that his price probably, it didn't just go down last night, but around the league, if you're looking at a high leverage spot, and there's a stat, I think Grandy tweeted it out about the last three elimination games for Clay Thompson, and the numbers haven't been good in no. the last three no. elimination games, and coming off of two career threatening injuries and all the rest of it, I do think that they're going to bring him back. But for me, the viability of those three being a championship trio, it's over. Well, Unless you can somehow extricate a player who is actually a one. So if you bring in somebody who's a one and then Steph is the 1A, or even if Steph's the two then, 
now we've got some action, but well, there's only a couple, three or four of those guys who you could possibly bring in. Totally. And that's a conversation for down the road. Not that far down the road, but yes, not yeah, today. Right? Not today. I think today is about Emotion, ma yeah. managing our emotions, uh, processing what we've just seen to, to understand uh, where we've been, how we got here. This is what I meant a week and a half ago when I said you got to stop calling them the big three. It doesn't mean a lot of people took that to mean I wanted certain portions of, or, or parts of them off of the roster. No, the, the, the big three are done, not necessarily in war, warrior uniforms. They're just done because they're not the big three anymore. Right. They need to be the big like um, one, four, and seven. That's what they are. Well, or something like I, that. I get where you're going. Do you going. know what yep. I'm saying? Yep. Okay, so, so that's number one. But number two is... And I bet we've all experienced this in one way, shape, or form in our lives. My God, I sure have. And in recent years. We kind of got duped. And that's okay. That's not on the Warriors, and it's not on us. It's just the way that it all goes down. We have spent the entire year. Well, if they just didn't blow those 24-point leads, if Jokic hadn't hit... The half-court shot, I hope that last night showed that the Warriors are exactly where they should be. So if you want to use the word should, surround that sentence. I don't want to hear they should be the five seed. I don't want to hear they could be the four seed. I don't want to hear that if Draymond hadn't been suspended, they should, they could. My 10-year-old son, I drove him to school today. You want to know what he said? He goes, Dad, you know what happened this year. The Warriors just got unlucky. I said, oh, really? Why do you feel that way? He goes, because they had a better record than last year. If they had just done this last year, they would have been the four seed. So the Western Conference just isn't right. It's the conference's fault. And I said, son, that's did, the way it goes. Did you stop the car? Uh, well, we were out of stoplights, okay. so it was okay. <laughs> okay so I could turn toward him and be like, so... This is a teachable moment. That's not bad luck. You have got to measure yourself against whatever is in front of you at all times every year, and it's a new story every day when you wake up. And and the Warriors are exactly where they should be. They are they they are not good enough. Ramona Shelburne said the other day, it did not work. She said it in a past tense. It did not fit. It did not fit. And so it is time to change this thing. We all have our own definition of what wholesale changes means. Is that a tweak? Is that a twist? Is it this person off the roster? Is it that person on? As you said, we've got all summer long for that. But my two messages today are, A, thank you all so much for what has been absolutely incredible, followed by, I don't want to hear any more ifs and shoulds. Right. They are exactly where they are supposed to be, which is watching. They went 5-21 and 21 against the top seven in the Western Conference. And if you want to throw the Lakers in there, they were 3-1 and one against the Lakers, 2-2 two and two against SAC. By and large, you were 10 and basically 27 against the teams ahead of you in the Western Conference. So, yeah, you're the 10 seed because you didn't beat the teams that were ahead of you. And luck... Good luck, bad luck. Well, Draymond getting suspended is not bad luck. That's bad acting, and it's a guy who's got a track record, and so that's the way that's going to go. Other than that, you didn't have a lot of bad luck. Steph was healthy. He missed a small handful of games. The Kings did. The Clay, Kings had bad luck. Clay Two of their best healthy. players were watching last night. Chris Paul broke his hand. Right. Other than that, Andrew Wiggins missed only four games this year, or five games due to a personal absence as opposed to 25 last year, so... You actually didn't get much bad luck at all, and you wound up where you wound up, and now I'm kind of in you, in your camp as far as the appreciation. I woke up this morning, the emotions had calmed a little bit, and I had that moment of reflection where if they do want to run this back, and by run it back I mean keep Clay, keep Steph, and keep Draymond, I don't believe that that's going to be a winning formula under any circumstance, but at the same time, I'd kind of be okay with it because they've provided so much winning in the past. If this is the way Joe Lacob wants to go about it and re-sign Clay for whatever number and you know maybe shuffle some of the pieces and 
still wind up being an 8 or a 9 or a 10 seed next year, I'll allow it. I won't well, be that mad. I, you know, that phrase, I think, is going to become a little bit of a trigger for Warriors fans. If I were Steve Kerr's advisor, and I'm not, I would I would have told him, don't do what you did last night. Don't use the phrase, run it back. That That's something you do when you, lo- when you lose in the conference finals. Yeah. You yeah. don't do that when you lost by 24 in the 9-10 play-in game on the road. That, that You don't use the word, we want to run it back. That that's not going to get people's minds in in the right place, um, because you can't run it back. Yes, you can have a lot of the same names, but there better be some new ones, and their responsibility of this current group better change. Because one thing was abundantly clear last night: there is way too much responsibility on the shoulders of Steph Curry, Clay Thompson, and Draymond Green because. They can't handle it anymore. That is too much responsibility for them. I also brought up the story of my son because if you're out there saying that the Warriors got unlucky, I'm just letting you know you sound like a 10 year old. Yeah. Uh, That's why I brought it up. And I like He's 10. It's fair. He's 10. So he's allowed to feel that. He's allowed to. That's right. He was born in 2014. That's right. He was barely alive when they started this unbelievable run, which I'm glad you expressed your appreciation because it took me. Last night, and I woke up this morning, and I had that same sort of feeling because this has been amazing. And this is my favorite team. This is my Giants, you know, related to you and how much you love the Giants. That's how much I love the Warriors. So I do feel this team at a deeper level than the other two teams. And so I've waited for them to even be decent my whole life. And then not only were they decent, they were dynastic. And now it feels like it's over but I'm trying not to forget how great the last 10-plus years have been. 888-957-9570. High priority today to uh, to get all of you and all of your thoughts on the air. It is that kind of a day, and I want you all to know that. That's what we're going to prioritize today. Yes, Steve Kerr is going to join us. We've got a ton of post-game and exit interview sound to play for you because it's important and there's more to come because the likes of Kevon Looney and Clay Thompson are still going to speak today, and we know that you all want to hear that. But on an emotional day, uh, we really want to hear from you. What did that feel like? 888-957-9570. Um, okay, Manny in San Jose, you're first up. Hey, Manny, what are you doing? Hey, how are you doing? What's up? Yeah, so just want to say a few things about last night's loss. Right? Steve Kerr lineup for starting Travis Jackson Davis, I think that put them in a hole. And he played play too much. Even when we were like one point down, he just kept him in there. Right? So Steve Dave, uh, I mean Steve Kerr, sorry. Steve Kerr has to be responsible for somehow. Okay, my only question that because I think Steve Kerr said last night, and he will again at five, he'll tell you about some of his shortcomings this year. And and even last night, you know, you mentioned starting Trace Jackson Davis, which is what this team has been doing for the last number of weeks, and it's been working very well. So I don't know why they would have gone away from that last night. But I, let, let's focus more broadly on your premise. If last night is Kerr's fault, then that sounds to me like you think that the players that need to be in place are in place. So, in other words, do you feel like the roster is good enough? I think the roster was good enough against Sacramento not to win the whole thing. Okay. But they could have won one game against Sacramento if he would manage his rotation well. Okay, and that's a fair opinion. It is one with which I disagree. Thank you, Manny. They got boat raced last night, manhandled, Every single rotation, every mix right. scientifically that you put on the court got absolutely crushed. So I'm not going to tell you it's a great night for Steve Kerr. I'm going to tell you that if you're putting all the blame on him, that means you think that the roster was good enough to win that game. And after watching the way that it looked, I mean, I was completely wrong with my pregame breakdown of the way that thing looked. 
Sacramento won that, could have won it by more, and if they were yeah. healthier, they would have won it by even more. Well, and the Warriors were a step slow and a rotation slow all night on defense. And so you, you start TJD, but you don't put him on Sabonis because Sabonis plays away from the basket. And so I think TJD was defensively a little out of sorts. Yep. Then he had the ghastly turnover, and Steve took him out. Yep. So you can blame Steve for starting him, but I'm with you. It's a, it's a starting lineup that's been working over the last month or so, so you go with it, and you realize at the, and I want to get it right here, at the 7-minute and, uh, yeah, 15-second mark, so 4 minutes and 45 seconds, you're only down 5, you take him out, you put in pods, who wasn't terrific last night either. So what is Steve supposed to do it wasn't horrible when though. he's got... You know, Steve has probably three to three and a half players actually playing well. Well, I mean, like, that's the thing. Our perspective got so wonky because if I asked you, like, who looked good last night for the Warriors? Moses Moody looked good. Okay. Eh. Right? He was all right. I mean, Kaminga looked pretty good. Eh. There was times where... I think we think those guys look good because of how bad everyone else looked. Exactly. I didn't think anybody looked great. Ste I thought, I thought he, Steph struggled. The, oh, God, it was not a good game for I Steph mean, Curry. I the, mean, the turnovers, some of the careless turnovers, he's getting picked. And, uh, you know, Draymond was, he was all right. I'm fine. He's fine. <laughs> <laughs> he had that one defensive play against the bonus. That was fine. Incredible. Yeah, that was a great play. Um, and that was another part of the uh, we're not calling fouls portion of the game. Yeah, a little bit, although that one it was, was clean. It was clean-ish. It was physical. Yeah, it